Yeah, yeah. sound works. Good. Start streaming. Okay. I need to connect one more device. Um, so it's gonna still take 15 minutes. Should be okay. So then also, yeah, so we are going to use these BCM2, 3, and 4 as outputs for the LEDs. And then uh, we are going to use a common ground over here. Um, uh, what was it? Like the connection. So uh, I don't remember exactly, but let's check the this reference design that I used, which was hidden under GPIO0. So on the on the Raspberry Pi, we use this library, which is GPIO zero, in order to uh, blink the LED. Uh, so it, had, it was one of the basic recites, and so here, there you go. So this is kind of yeah, it's exactly what I was planning to do. Uh, so in, in in my case, without the resistor, because the LEDs are meant for for five volts, and the um, so if if the, I would be using five volts, then I wouldn't need a resistor. And in our case, we are using three point um, three volts. Um, it's it's always a nice idea to add the resistor in between, but this this time I'm just gonna avoid it for for the sake of simplicity. Uh, you know, as you see with the GPIO zero and Python code, you can read buttons in an easy way. You can do do interactions. So basically, you can you can use uh, your Raspberry Pi as an Arduino, and this library totally enables it. And basically, the set setup that we are going to have is uh, something like this. So we are going to have a common ground, and uh, we are going to connect three LEDs. Um, I'm just gonna go back to our reference design. So this is also ground. Oh, okay, so I can just connect the next. Cable. So I connected LED one here to to BCM three, three to BCM four, and then common ground here, and then just gonna connect also the um, common ground is uh, violet. Yeah. Go back to GP zero like so. One is white, two is no. Go back there. Green. Um, and now um, I am. I didn't transition actually. <laughs> I did, uh, <laughs> one more time, sorry. Uh, can you just illuminate so you see? Uh, yeah, yeah. Again, so the Raspberry Pi side. Uh, a bit more light uh, over here. Yeah, and then the breadboard side, like so. Awesome. Okay, now we're set. Uh, yeah, let's let's go back to desktop mode over here. So yeah, um, and if you look at the pinout over here, then uh, so these pins for LEDs are BCM two, BCM three, and BCM four. So these three, and this is the common ground. 
and uh, yeah, basically this is the, the layout that we are going to use. Um, so the next challenge is to boot up the, the Raspberry Pi. <coughs> so uh, the, all I'm missing right now is the uh, the power supply. I will, I will get a power supply. Okay, let's go. Yeah, so boots up. All right. Um, yeah, and, and uh, what we did last time, so we created a Python script and uh, we also made it run on, on boot. So basically here you see that when, when the Raspberry Pi turns on, uh, also the LED turns on. And uh, I'm gonna log in with a uh, username Pi and the password Raspberry. And uh, let's check the IP address because we set also the Raspberry Pi to connect to the FabLab network. Uh, so if you type hotname minus i, so there's something weird happening. Yeah, it gives us 193.107.5. Uh, so let's try to uh, not memorize that. But, uh, but the idea was that uh, you can open a, a new browser tab like so, and you can enter Uh, you can enter the IP address, so 193, I think it's still the same, and then you can uh, switch it off or on. So if you now take a look at this LED, so I'm going to type off here, it's turned it off already, so it's somehow already new, and I'm going to call it, call it on, yeah, if I, if I type on, it's on, off, off. Like so. Um, and uh, another thing that we were able to do was the SSH into it. Uh, maybe I'm not going to do it uh, this time, so I'm just going to use this native screen over here. Uh, and um, yeah, let's see. So we have API test. Although maybe we are going to get a little bit more uh, crisp uh, text rendering if we are going to do it via SSH. So there's not, not much of a difference. So it's just. Um, what we did, we opened the terminal on our computers, or you can use Putty on uh, on Windows, and we just did an SSH connection. So SSH, and uh, actually I have the command. Uh, so t I last used this terminal, like the original terminal on Mac OS, uh, exactly for the purpose. So just uh, to just to connect to the Raspberry Pi. And the IP address is still the same, so I'm just gonna connect. For the password, I'm going to enter Raspberry. Oh, you are, somebody is playing around with the LEDs, nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so there's no encryption or no passwords in between, so it's just like a web server, so anybody can access it. And, um, and yeah, so LS, um, yeah, API test, uh, so so the, the, the solution is actually in the API test. Um, so if I do CD into it, CD means change directory, in case you don't know. And there's the serve API PY um, here. I'm just gonna expand this window a little bit. And I'm going to get, use the nano text editor uh, to open the serve API PY. And this is the code that we wrote uh, last Thursday. Um, so we are using Flask. Uh, that's that's basically the the web um, the web API component. So this allows us to this is a library a uh, Python library that allows us to to make a kind of a web server to launch a web server. GPIO zero um, is for uh, for managing the LEDs on the uh, Raspberry Pi and doing uh, all kinds of crazy things with GPIO uh, on the Raspberry Pi. Here we have um, application, Flask application. We are defining Flask, uh, Flask application here in this line. Then we are defining one LED. Uh, so the numbering is uh, the, the numbering uh, according to the, to the BCM layout. So BCM2, so two means BCM2, three would mean BCM3 and four, four. Uh, and then here we are turning the LED on once the application starts. And then here, uh, so there are these markers uh, which specify that, yeah, so if you are going to call, if you're just going to open the IP address uh, without calling any specific file or command, then it's gonna, 
is going to call the function uh, greet user. And the definition of the greet function is, you know, just that it was going to display this text. So welcome to Wonderland. Uh, and if we look at this, so for example, if we go to root like this, it, it displays welcome to Wonderland. Uh, and then, uh, so when we are rooting, when we are calling on, there is a led on function, which turns the LED on, and it returns led should be on now. So if we take a look here, led should be on now. And off, led should be off now. Yeah, like so. Uh, and we can define all kinds of other functions. Uh, and then here we are just, just as a special way that I failed to explain at the moment, this is, which is running the application and uh, hosting it on port 80. Uh, in order to host it on uh, port 80, uh, which is more like a system reserved port, you need to launch the application as root. Uh, that's all achieved. Uh, so we used systemd in order to uh, automatically start the server on boot. Uh, so if we go to etc system systemd, uh, let's system. Mm -hmm. Um, so here we can see all the all the services that are mm, available, and in our case, uh, we are using the API test service. So you see, there's API test. So we can open it with Nano again, mm -hmm. and we can see. So yeah, so I left this reference here <coughs> because I, I I got part of the code from from this blog post, um, Dev Dungeon. And uh, yeah, it's basically three parts, unit service and install. In the unit part, you add the description. And then uh, you specify that the service should happen after network target. Uh, then uh, about a service, so the service type is simple. User that should run this server is a root. Um, uh, and this is the this exact start means, so it's a line that should be run uh, in order to start the service. And then it's going to continue to run in the background. So we are uh, using Python 3. Uh, so in general, if you are starting with Python, uh, ignore Python 2, just use Python 3. Uh, and because like by 2020, Python 2 is going to be dead, hopefully. And then, uh, yeah, he, there's a path to the script that we want to run. And then if it fails, then restart. That's kind of keep alive option. And then, yeah, so other things. Uh, so I still need need to do my reading on systemd, but uh, this is how far I got, uh, and it works. Um, and you can also call, uh, you can use this tool, systemctl. In order to, yeah, to, to kind of get the status of this service. So you see that API test service, REST API service is loaded and actually active. And um, if you want, you could possibly stop it. Okay, so you actually need to enter a password in order to stop it. And then mm, Maybe you just need to use the magic keyword sudo in front of this, and now it's stopped. And now if you try to access it here, it's going to give you a 404 or some other error. So it's not accessible because the server is not running. But that's fine. Uh, so we, you can start it back again. Just starting it. So you see the LED goes on also. You can turn it off. Come on, turn off. Yes, now it works. No, off. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's like a you know, LED on off game. Uh, yeah, uh, what I wanted to do before building the, the thing with um, REST, uh, REST API, or this Riot.js first is to go to home directory, um, open up the API test uh, script. And I wanted to add uh, an additional LEDs. So let's say that this is going to be the LED A. Then 
then LED B is LED number three. So I'm, yeah, I'm looking at the, here I'm taking it into account this BCM numbering. So three and four, uh, it's gonna be your, And uh, yeah, let's turn those on also. LED A on, red B dot on, red C dot on. Uh, and um, I would like to accept uh, parameters um, for these and according to the parameter that I choose I would like to uh, turn on a specific LED uh, and for this I need to look up the the flask documentation shortly um, in order to understand this app root Maybe we can use these paths. So in, our, in the rest style, we don't need really to use post or get uh, variables, but we can just uh, we can just use, for example, Gonna be an integer mm. led ID and for the off uh, I'm gonna specify a LED I think it should start with a slash like so led And then uh, apparently this is going to allow us to use this parameter post ID as a as an argument for the function. Um, let's do that now. Mm, let A B T D. Uh, yeah, we can make an array out of those. Um, basically in order to avoid if else statements. So maybe let's do that. Uh, I forgot a bit about how to let's quickly check that. I'm not, not the most proficient Python user, but uh, we're gonna figure it out in one minute. So this Okay, so we have um, a way to actually specify it on the fly. So just gonna LEDs is going to equal LED two, LED three, LED four, like so. So this, which means that we don't need these ones and for LED and LEDs led on should work. And uh, LEDs LED ID on. These 
here I'm yeah just converting. Um, so I'm using the LEDs uh, array and the LED ID. She's just starting with zero. So the first LED is going to be zero. The second is going to be one, and the third two. And uh, yeah, I'm just accessing the the instantiated elements. Uh, and yeah, kind of should work actually. Um, so let's try to restart the service. Um, so if we go system control. Restart. And now let's try to test it. Um, so LED one. Or zero doesn't work that easily. I'm gonna stop it and try to debug. Uh, so yeah, Python three serve API, and I think I need also to use sudo. Da -da 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 -da. So there is an error. So name LED is not defined. Ah, okay, because I'm using lowercase. Fair enough. It needs uppercase over here. Yes, and now I think this other one is just doesn't work. Uh, I think it's um invalid LED, so I'm gonna just use another one. Yeah, so this this works. So now I have three. Uh, so now should be able to. Yeah, so zero. Uh, how come this is zero? Sorry. The LED, the ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's true. So LED. Uh -huh. Yeah. Now. Okay. And now, so now we have access to all three LEDs, and uh, so I am going to try to turn them, all of them off. And your task is to try to turn on, them on. It's kind of always. See, it's like kind of you know you need to change these variables over here. So this is why we are going to to use the. Uh, to use the <laughs> right JS in order to make this a bit more, you know, human that we can just click in the browser and uh, and uh, and it happens. So yeah, so I'm just gonna uh, switch to the um, to the display to the to the camera a little bit and uh, now be very active. Try to switch those LEDs. Yes, very good. Three. So now all, all three off, please. All of them. <laughs> There's one more left. Who's gonna do it? Yes, perfect. Thank you. Um, okay, so now we have our API. Um, so we can implement some other functions like turn all of the LEDs off or, or on or so. Uh, and at this point, I'm just gonna close the debug part and I'm just gonna start it as a service. And uh, yeah, all of them are on again. Um, one off, yes. Uh, yeah, and um, uh, I mean, at this point, we sh we could uh, start um, building the, the Riot application. So, um, so this is the framework that we are going to use. Uh, so the basically, so it's an um, so all we need is an HTML website with some enhancements. But Riot is nice because we are going to be able to create re reusable component com components. With, with some parameters that are going to change. And in this case, it's going to be the LED uh, icon, and uh, it's just gonna change the ID, and uh, we are going to click on this icon and then determine whether it's on or off. Uh, yeah, and then we will be able to continue to play the game. <laughs> so if your right application is going to work on your computer. Um, so, um, uh, in order to do so, 
um, I'm going to use the same terminal, but uh, you know, instead of using it here, so this is the connection to the Raspberry Pi. Uh, I'm just going to create a new terminal window, which is going to represent uh, my local computer, which is going to be a bit smaller, maybe, like so. Uh, now I'm in my home directory, uh, so users Chris. Um, I'm going to go to desktop. And I'm going to create a directory called um, first. Um, so Fab Academy Clear Space or FAT uh, Riot JS Tmall. And I'm going to change directory to it. And obviously, it's empty. But this is my path. Um, first things first, uh, I'm going to create an index.html file. So I'm going to uh, use touch to do so. And um, Oh, yeah, the, the, the easiest way to open uh, this, this directory in, in Sublime uh, is, so I have it installed as a, as a command line tool, so I can just do this. So and as you see, there's this directory and the index file over here. Um, and, you know, like for HTML page, what you can do is, uh, so in Sublime it's really easy. You open the tag and you start typing HTML and it gives you this template. So instead of using four spaces, I, um, I prefer to use two. So I'm going to also to increase the, the text size uh, a little bit. Well, maybe not so much, but like so, it's going to be okay. And for the title, uh, Briar.js demo, uh, demo with Raspberry Pi or with uh, GPIO zero on Raspberry Pi. So um, and another thing is, is uh, nice to add to the website so as one of the first things uh, is a meta tag that specifies the char set exactly like this. So if you are using you know Finnish letters or Latvian letters or Russian letters or Japanese letters or uh, any other language then uh, this is very useful. So it's important to make your websites uh, display text correctly. And uh, usually it's a good idea um, to add some uh, basic styling to it, um, especially to the HTML. So normal, uh, normally there's there are like these uh, uh, CSS libraries which are calling uh, which are called the normalizing libraries, which are normalizing the browsers, uh, you know, the CSS default properties to, to all browsers. So you can so this kind of a layer uh, that equalizes it all, and then you can build your uh, visual application on top of it. Uh, but so for now, so the most important parts that we want to change is we want there to be no margin, so we're going to zero that out. Uh, we're going to set the width to 100%, height to 100%, uh, uh, and then background to black, because what else? So if we want to work with LEDs, then it's probably going to happen in a dark environment. or the people who have dark personalities. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, here we could start to build our application and you could, uh, you know, I don't know, write, you know, dev ID, uh, you know, or class, you know, LED, and then you could specify a link for it and you could um, add the add image into it. Um, with a source, um, yeah. So this this all happens, and and then you, you, your HTML part could be uh, could be become very complicated. But our goal our goal is just to use one tag in in this level, which should be the app tag. 
And this is going to be just enough to display a really complex, relatively complex interface with LEDs. And at this point, we are ready to go on and download um, RioJS uh, library. So we go to download, and we need RioJS library together with the compiler. So this Riot plus compiler minjs. So I'm going to right click it and save link as and go to my directory on desktop. Um, so I'm going to have my fat, fat folder. Fat. I need to clean my desktop because it's the next thing that's coming up. So fat RioJS demo. Uh, and I'm going to make a new folder, JS, for, this stands for JavaScript. Uh, and I'm going to store all my JavaScript libraries there. Save. Um, and the next thing is that we need to include it in, um, in our HTML file. And a good practice is to do it not in the head um, of, the, of the HTML part, but actually do it after, uh, after all the HTML elements uh, have loaded so at the end of the on the bottom of the page so because like uh, what what browsers do oh so they download the page first they download the head and then they start uh, downloading the body and then they uh, then they parse the body and then uh, you know it's it's important because in that way your content of the website is going to download first and only then all the other like visual aspects like JavaScript and CSS and uh, you know whatever you define um, on the lower lower part of the website then then, then it's going to load. So this is a good practice to load the JavaScript on the bottom of the page. Um, so GS and our file was called Riot plus compiler that min minified JS. So I mean, if you open it up, you will see just minified means it's just going to be all compressed in one line. So like a really nicely unreadable a string of letters, which actually is. Uh, uh, so I mean, if you look at this uh, Riot compiler JS uh, normally, so this is uncompressed version, unminified version, so to say. So this is the whole library. Um, but if, if it's minified, then it looks like this. It's just one long line, string of letters. Um, and yeah, now from the terminal, I'm trying, I'm gonna try to open it up in, in a browser. So in my case, it opens in Firefox. So I could uh, use some web developer tools um, in order to see what's going on, whether there are, there are no errors or anything. So sometimes if you misspell this and you refresh it, then it throws an error somewhere. It didn't in this case. Control. Loading failed for the script with source. Uh, so let's try to fix that. Components object is deprecated. It will be soon removed. Um, so yeah, uh, so this is also uh, the the uh, last stable version of Riot. So they claim they are claiming that they are going to soon release version four. But I'm going to use actually Chrome for for debugging. I kind of I'm more used to the developer tools over here. So it's a good idea to use developer tools. They can help you optimize the website big deal so yeah here so for example mince js so it's gonna complain yeah file not found okay i'm gonna fix it yeah now it's fine um and as expected so we have this uh, black background so i mean if you would challenge and change it to um pink pink no not pink no why am pressing that button <laughs> Uh, okay, so this is gonna be pink. Uh, it's gonna be magenta is a nice, nice color. I really like that you can use uh, uh, literals instead of numbers, but it's gonna be black. I think let's let's stick to that. Um, yeah, so you can change these. 
And sometimes if you won't, won't have this open um, and you would change the color here in the CSS, um, it might need it sometimes. No, it changes. I mean, if you would uh, work with uh, write CSS in a separate file, then it probably won't work because it would be cached. Uh, and in order to avoid that, you can go to view developer tools. And uh, here you can, so if you expand it a little bit, you can enable this checkbox, which is disable, disabling cache, uh, so which is very nice, especially when you're iterating on a website and uh, you want to see the latest changes that are happening. So, uh, so your library, our library is loaded, and now actually we need to, um, since Riot it is that you need to you specify your components or your tags in separate files. So therefore, uh, I'm going to go to the terminal, now make a, a new directory which is going to call tags, which is going to contain uh, my Riot.js tags. So cd tags, I'm going to touch app.tag. It's going to be like a special Riot.js uh, extension. So we can improvise with those. And if we go back to Sublime, we see that there is a directory tags and there is an app tag. And uh, the basic structure is as follows. And so we start with the tag definition like so. And in between the closing and opening tags, so still I'm going to set the spaces to two. Uh, so here you can add some HTML. And uh, add an uh, image source. This is non existent yet. It's a good idea to use an alt tag always. And then you can specify script part for the component. And in Sublime, instead of using plain text, we can actually select the Riot.js syntax. And it's all going to be. And we can also specify a style for those. Uh, and let's say that so we can use um, parameters here. Um, for example, can give a title, and then, for example, specify a function. The cool thing about Riot.js is also that you don't need to use semicolons. title and then we can also specify what is going to happen on so we can we can track Riot.js event so so if, if it's gonna mount then then we're going to pass uh, an anonymous function in order to do to call the change title function it's going to change the title so otherwise this title is going to be wait so basically, Riot.js is going to load this. Uh, it's going to display the text wait uh, here as the title. Um, and then once it's going to mount it, it's going to call the change title, title function, which is going to change the title to whatever the, the parameter is in there. 
and this is for the script part and then we can use a special CSS var variable that is called the scope and we can specify style for the scope only and we are going to set the text to red uh, yeah so that's that and then and then the index HTML part uh, so we need to load this um, As a, as a JavaScript file, so and uh, Riot, so the type is Riot tag, and then we need to specify the source, which is going to be tags app tag, and lastly we need to initialize it. So I'm going to just, yeah, so I'm going to, uh, for this I don't need a source, so for this is just a regular script tag, and uh, once the Riot uh, library is loaded, um, a, a variable called Riot is, is becoming available, and it has a, uh, it has a method mount, um, and I can mount all the tags if I have multiple or I can choose a specific tag in this case app so I'm gonna save and for the app um, I can specify a parameter like this and let's check uh, so if we go to here It throws me an error. I wonder what it is. Um, see app tag. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Why is it doing it to me? Object progress event function key kr error XML request index HTML twenty four um, could it be that I need to launch it as a um, HTTP server? Uh, trying to access something. Uh, am I running another server already somewhere? Yeah, I am. Uh, so let's try one more time. I can copy this. CH title is not defined. Ah, okay, because um, I have to add this thing here. Uh, 
and yeah, the image in the front. And yeah, apparently I have to, uh, it seems that I have to launch a development server because otherwise it's not being able to load something, do some things. So all kinds of development servers that you can get these days. So you can launch one with uh, PHP. So in my case, uh, I was installing this one. So if you use an old package manager, or if you if you have a PHP installed, uh, so with Boo or other other tools, you can launch a server like this also. There are all kinds of uh, single line solutions. You can launch a Python server. Um, yeah, somehow this is a requirement, but um, yeah. Uh, how to solve this? Um, I would recommend you, so if you have Mac computers, then install Homebrew. Which is claimed to be the missing package, package uh, manager for, for Mac. So on, on Linux, it's easier. You just apt get uh, npm or, or node.js and, and uh, you go. But before you do that on Mac, you need to install Homebrew. And then you can not nom, but uh, N npm. Um, so with brew you would be able to install that. But let's focus on the on the Riot JS part. Mm -hmm. Still, yeah, I wouldn't need to start it as a server. So come on, let's let's. I want to exit this process. HTTP server in this uh, directory and uh, yeah I go with it like so and still it doesn't work really so it's wait but then options title uh, it should give me this one somehow or it's like gonna be this OPTS title And I think I have to update it also. Yes, here we go. Uh, so it's important also after every action to update the view. Um, and uh, yeah, we could also initialize this with a counter. And for example, every time we click the image, we could call a function. And let's call that function this count. I wonder, do I need a parenthesis there or no? No, I don't think so. 
this count is going to be a function which is going to increase the counter like so and here in this title I am going to add multiplying sign or just X and display the count as well and after the count function I'm also going to call this update like so let's refresh Ooh. So, hmm. why is it behaving like this? This count is not a function. Ah, okay. Um, yeah, because I am using the, the variable count and the function name is the same. So this is the problem. So you need to use a different fun function name. So I'll just add count or add or uh, more like in, no, add count like so. And I'm going to change it also for the image. Uh, so for this unclick function. So in order to make it more readable, I'm just going to separate this in lines like so. Click refresh. Hola times zero. And now when I click on the image placeholder, it's going to increase the value over here. And yeah, and still like on the HTML side, it's just this app tag. And then all the logic we can specify over here. Let's say localize also. And then we can change the text color on the fly. Uh, change it to cyan. Yeah. And then, um, so for our exercise, I have prepared um, two images. Mm, so I did this demo earlier. Uh, and then images, uh, it's a bulb off and bulb on. And this is what we are going to use for turning the LEDs on and off. So I'm going to copy these and um, go to the folder where we have the our FAT, our Fab Academy Thursday project here. I'm going to make a folder images and copy them here so bulb on and off and um, in our source file I'm going to define a new tag uh, I'm going to create a new tag so this is another way how to create a new file in Sublime you can just uh, right click uh, on the folder where you want to create it and you type in the name which is going to be um, bulb or LED dot tag hit save um, and we can just save it into the tags folder like that and now and I'm going to increase the spaces to not increase but decrease it to two and instead of using plain text I'm again going to use Riot.js syntax highlighting, like so. And for the LED, I just need an image source um, alt text mm, bulb image. And for the source, I'm going to use a parameter. It's going to be this. Um, uh, led image like so script 
tag for our logic and then style. And for images in general, uh, when I'm designing something, uh, I tend to set the container font size to zero in order to avoid any kind of borders. And um, see so also font size is zero. What I could add, I could add that. So here I could use some semicolons, or maybe not. Maybe it works without. Font size is zero. Margin is zero. Like that. So right now, founder isn't gonna complain. Um, yeah, so LED in script, so this uh, led image, I'm just going to start with, uh, with a blank image, which is um, an images folder, which is a bulb, so if I uncover this one, bulb of dot jpeg gpg, um, and then, no, not yet, uh, then in the index file, so just after where I'm loading the app tag, I'm going to double click the next line by using Command D, Command Shift D, and load in the the LED tag. And I'm going to leave this riot mount the same because it's basically just mounting all the tags that I, I have loaded. And um, and we also don't need to change anything in this app tag here on the, on the root level. We can go into the app tag. And here, instead of having this placeholder image, we could actually use LED. And we could add this parameter over here. And see what happens. Yeah, here we go. Now instead of having an image tag, we are using our own custom LED tag and increasing the count whenever we click on the image. So that works. Uh, so we can go on and continue working on the LED image. Um, and one thing that we want to change is um, so we, have, we want to specify uh, an object that's going to, to hold the the two image paths uh, and going to somehow tell us whether it's this image represents the on state or off state. So I'm going to uh, make a object that is going to be called this images. Um, and for the on part, I'm going to specify this guy. And for the off, I'm going to specify not the same, but I'm just going to replace this with on. And now I can use those, so this object in the following way. So this image is on. going to be the on image. So let's see how it works. There's some sort of uh, problem there. Ah, led image, image. So here, that was the problem. Mm, ah, yeah, and I flipped the on and off. So this is going to be on and this is going to be the off. Yeah, like so. Yeah, here now the one is visible and still we can click it and the count changes. So yeah, so first of all, we are displaying an image tag. Um, and for the source of the image, we are using a parameter that is pointing us to the this image variable. We're always keeping the bulb image uh, alternative descri description. Then for the scripts, the first thing we do, uh, we define what images we are going to use, and we are keeping it this in this uh, object, uh, 
where we are labeling the, the paths to, to the images with simple names, like on and off. And then we are assigning the on image uh, to the current image. Uh, here in the style part, you know, we're defining the font size to zero and margin to zero because uh, now, so we can get rid of this title maybe, maybe not yet, but uh, we can duplicate this. And we'll have two images and you can click both of them and it's going to increase the count. And actually we can multiply them according to our uh, physical design. If we add one, one LED to the Raspberry Pi, then we can uh, you know, add uh, one image, so one, uh, one LED more also here, like really just by repeating the, the tag that we just made. Not like copying the, the whole code so that is visible here, but just one line. Uh, just usually 10 letters or so. And now what do we want to do? We want to change it into toggling. Uh, so whenever we click the image, this one, so in the individual image, uh, we want uh, the image to change from the on to the off state and vice versa. So I'll click so instead of so we can use these and we can also not use these. So the, in Riot, these um, uh, quotes, uh, quotes, right? Uh, double quotes, they are not necessary here. And this is a little toggle. And we are going to define as function. This toggle is function. Uh, and this function is going to check whether it's if this dot image, no, equals this images dot on, this image is going to be set to the off image. unless it's not true, then this image is going to be set to this images dot on. And let's see how that works. So you can now turn them individually on and off. And yeah, next thing is that uh, we somehow need to add this uh, network support. <coughs> and the easiest way to do so is actually to use a library, which is uh, called um, uh, jQuery. So it's also the recommended library by, uh, by Riot.js. Even though it's built with, the, with this you know, dependency-less kind of philosophy and minimalism in mind, so still you know, jQuery is kind of the de facto um, JavaScript layer on top uh, in order to handle all browsers equally and uh, it's minimal enough uh, you know in order to work with network requests and all kinds of um, uh, document object object model uh, with like real-time html manipulation so it's you know a really nice library to start with so how about we go to jquery bye website and take a look at that jQuery download jQuery version 3.41 yeah we want that and again we are going to we're going to go for production compressed minified jQuery so I'm gonna click on this mm -hmm. uh, yeah so there are many ways for to do this I think you can theoretically I think that it's going to complain. I think it's, it has something in between. Uh, I'm just going to copy all this. Um, no, it should work actually. If I right click and I save link as, uh, I'm going to save this in the, in the folder here. And let's just check whether it actually has the, yeah, so it has the library inside. In a similar fashion, uh, also minified and uh, everything in one line. Uh, and the next thing is that we need to include this um, into our HTML file. So 
So we can load that just after loading the Riot library over here. So this is going to be jQuery 3.4.1.min.js. And uh, in order to test whether it works, uh, we can use this magical one-liner, not really a one-liner, it's just kind of, you can also split it in two lines. Uh, just really need a semicolon, no, we don't need. <coughs> and it's gonna just throw um, an alert and kind of a uh, pop up at us uh, if it loads successfully. So we just go here, load it. Yeah. So one two seven o o one eight eighty eighty says yes. At at at, and then it loads the website. <laughs> uh, yeah. So it it works. So now we can just uh, so this 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 is to make sure that the jQuery is actually loaded. So now we can actually use it in our LED tag. Um, and what we are going to do, so when we are toggling, um, we are going to execute an Ajax request. And so in order to do so, we can use this dollar, dollar sign, which stands for jQuery. And then it has a sub, sub module, which is called Ajax, which is more like a function and then in that function, we can define uh, an Ajax call, like so. Uh, and we can specify the URL, which is going to be our uh, IP address for the, for the LEDs here, like this one. LED. one on or off uh yeah we're gonna decide it in a, in a minute um, um and we don't need really anything more here uh, basically we just need to specify what is going to help happen when it's done so we can actually uh, specify a function which is going to receive data Back. So we can do something with the data. Um, use this double bracket. So normally you would just first thing you would log it into the console and see whether whether it returns what you expect it to return. So you know, in our case, it's this um, text over there. So that we define on the Python end. Um, yeah, and uh, so this I will just for now leave the same and let's just see how it works and what it, what does it return. HTTP request, right off from origin, in block size, course policy, no access control. Oh, okay, hmm. What could we do about that? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, NTP date, NTP date. <laughs> okay, so now it's gone. Uh, now you have a block origin. Uh, mm -hmm. That's nice. From your own. Yeah, maybe you should run the local server for this. Okay, well, I have it. Yeah. You have, you know how to do it. 
All right. There's actually one really, really easy way to do it. What is like? And put this in the front. Here. So now we have the date. Let's try to install that. No way, it worked. <laughs> yeah, the time. Yeah, the time. Okay. Yeah. Oh. So they added the, the auto MPP server. Okay. And then Great. So apparently the, the ports are blocked. Okay, now, so uh, if we go back to um, our thing, it's we need to import just this one up here. So. But she's running just from localhost. You don't need the ports. Uh, ah, but you want to. No. Yeah, the Pi, that's the, that's the thing. Uh, of course, the idea is to use this Riot to build an interface for application on the Pi. Yeah, and then basically, yeah, you could serve it on the Pi. Uh, and then we, yeah, so we need to course size this application. So. Yeah. And now sudo system ctl yeah uh, here api test okay now it's restarted and now let's go here and to the to the browser right js demo thanks yeah. Good. Yeah, so it worked actually. Um, yeah, so it should be off now. So it re responds me with this message. Uh, now I just need to adjust the code in order so that it um, figures out the which LED it is. And uh, according to the LED, it also switches it on and off. And to do so, uh, yeah, we will need, or yeah, I'm just gonna maybe. So for this LED, uh, I will specify ID. So ID is zero. ID is one and ID is two, like so. And then in the LED tag, uh, so whenever I will call the toggle, then here I am going to replace this part with this OPTS. That ID and off. For now, let's see whether it actually works for us. So now it should I should be able to turn on them individually. Off. Yeah. One, two, three. Yes, it works. Set the URL depending. Oh no. <laughs> Wait, um, so yeah, call URL.
image is off and also the call URL is going to be off. This is going to be on. And then in the Ajax call, we are going to call the called and collect data. This is just going to send us back. Um, here now, if we refresh, now I can click and it actually turns on and off the individual LEDs. Um, additionally to that, we could maybe improve it a little bit. So in the app tab, we just really don't need the title and we don't need the counter. So the counter was more uh, as an example for intermediate example in the middle of the process. So I'm going to remove those. Uh, also the counts and the title variables. So we won't need this. Uh, also the mount function, not necessary really change title, also not needed. Nothing in here is actually needed. I could just, you know, get rid of it. I just need it as a placeholder as a container for the LEDs. And then in the LED, uh, maybe uh, I would need something. I need a container, so I need a, a style for it. Uh, and as for the scope, I'm um, going to define the display as block. And I'm going to define the text align as center. Um, let's see how it works. Yeah, so like this. And then if we now, uh, so we would like to also set the positioning to position to absolute. And uh, we want to offset it from the top by 50%. And let's see how that happens. Yeah, and now we are losing uh, the width of the container, which is fine. Just going to set it back to 100%. Yeah, it's now here. So now it's calculating 50%. Uh, uh, so the top line of the container is 50% in the middle of the view. What do we need? We need to offset it. So we need to bring it back by half of the image size, which is uh, around 200. And there we can use a margin top uh, with a negative value, which is 100 pixels. Now it's exactly in the middle. Nice. So this is what I wanted to achieve today. So like a LED interface. And um, yeah, if I now switch over to the camera view, Where's my OBS? See here. Uh, yeah, on the background, you can actually see the interface here. And yeah, I can click. No, not here. Here, I can click. Come on. Yeah, so now I'm going to turn all of them off. All right, so from this side, it's going to be better. Mm, it's the uh, layout is not matching really. So this should be it right now. Yeah, the second one, and then the third one. switch all of them off yeah awesome so uh, with this we can conclude today's um, uh, fab academy thursday's uh, in, uh, 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 activity um, so i am quite satisfied we solved a lot of issues um, so as you saw on the raspberry pi the reason why um, python 3 package manager cannot install packages is because my my date was not right so i had to and then so this api uh, so 
So since we, it's not going to be the website, it's going to be more like an API. We could run it on another port. So the same AT, AT could work. Um, because actually we want to run the interface. So here, this this should be it. Uh, let's just test it. So I'm gonna stop the API test server, and I'm going to go to my home directory and make uh, make their um, right app, and I'm going to go in there mm. and touch uh, index. HTML file and edit it and uh, add a header. I made a boring text and now let's see. So, is it possible to do something like this that instead of using Python regular? We can use Python 3 um, and actually use sudo to launch it on port 80. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's that. Mm, and here we could specify the port, probably. Yeah. Um, and now when we go here, and uh, 193, yeah, it works. So with this one, we could serve the directory. Clients are dot this in pi to pi, and then the IP address. And then the path is gonna be home pi. Oh, we need to create a directory then. Do this and then... Yeah. Yeah. Let's stage and uh, change the mode to so that I can execute uh, it. And uh, also I need to specify the shebang that I'm going to use bash in order to execute, but probably just that. And for this one as well, All right, um, now I think it's it's gonna work. Uh, oh no, it does not. Um, can I specify the path to the HTTP server? Ah, yeah, home by Riot app. So yeah, so um, it's a bit of a hard, hard, hardcore hacking mode right now. But yeah, the general idea, like to to make the Riot app, it it worked out. But this is more. Now it should work. Yeah, so now we have the interface and we can switch the LEDs on and off. And uh, yeah, you can try to connect to this IP address now and you should be able to turn uh, the LEDs on and off. Um, 
Yeah, so basically the structure of the application on the, on the Raspberry Pi, it could be a bit more organized, but the idea is that we have a, a separate Python script which is, um, which is uh, launching the API server, which is uh, managing the LEDs. And then we are launching the standard uh, kind of packaged Python HTTP server to launch the interface of it. Uh, and they are intercommunicating with each other uh, on the same, same host. And if we do it like this, then basically we also do not need to worry about cores. So we could avoid that. Um, but of course, if you want to do local development, if you want to develop on your own computer and then interface and then upload after, then uh, so it's kind of a kind of the way to do it. Uh, yeah, uh, and like after this session, I think I'm also going to upload some parts of the solution to uh, to GitHub. Um, I'm just gonna, you know, end the stream today, then have a glass of wine, sleep it over, and then <laughs> you know if I do it uh, tomorrow or during the weekend. Uh, but uh, otherwise, uh, I hope it was fun and. Uh, so next week, uh, we need to check what's what's up for the next week on the Facebook page. Ah, okay, using motor drivers. And related to motor drivers, uh, just last week, uh, so Daniela uh, Ingracia, who is the, the mastermind behind the, the Laser Duo project, he released a new motor driver, who is apparently really cool and uh, self uh, self. Uh, uh, buildable, uh, so uh, maybe uh, I'm going to try to mill it with our um, milling equipment and to try to drive one of the, the, the heaviest motors that I that I can find at the lab. We have one like really weird stepper motor, like I think like bipolar or unipolar, and uh, yeah. We'll try to operate with that. So maybe we'll go, we're going, we are going to try to upload the firmware to the board and then connect the motor and see how it behaves. Otherwise, um, otherwise, thanks for watching. Goodbye.